welcome to the Chrissy B Show. We have a very healthy program for you today. Now, mealtime is an important part of everyone's day, and our diet affects our mood, our performance, and our health. But enjoying our food is also very important. It doesn't have to be boring. We have Chef Del Pinnock here to discuss keeping your heart healthy through your diet, and he'll be preparing a healthy but yummy dessert. We'll also be speaking to Julianne Ponan, CEO of Creative Nature that produces superfoods. We also have self-development coach Chris Brown who'll be speaking about how to be committed. And we also have a fitness tip from Jane on having strong bones. And of course, I'll be answering a question from one of you guys at home. But first of all, I'd like to welcome back the lovely Rihanna. Hi, Chris. Hello. Who told me she was very naughty on her diet? <gasps> Was I not supposed to say? No. Are oh, you looking so beautiful? I feel kind of blotchy. Oh, dear. I, I indulged it's in a bit some bloated. naughty treats. Yeah, I did too. I, I had a that, triple yeah. chocolate cheesecake. <gasps> you should and have had. I know. One of Dell's desserts, which she'll be making after the break. Which I'm going to take. The which I'm sure is going to be really home. delicious. I'm going to need it. You better try I that just, instead. <laughs> yeah, triple chocolate cheesecake. Oh, no. Then I had a mahesive double chocolate gatto. Oh, you did? And I just went downhill from oh, there. Oh, don't worry, today's a new day. It is You've a new day. You've been good today? I have been. Good girl. I really have been. I'm just going to throw that point in one of my news articles. Being healthy is really hard. No, it's not. I, thought, I really disagree. It's kind of hard, and the stores don't make it any easier, but we'll get into that later on. All right. <laughs> well, I don't agree with that, because I think I actually love being we'll healthy. We'll debate it. All right. <laughs> You can go to my Instagram and see what I had for breakfast today, by the way, Chrissy. Chrissy Boudram. What did really you nice have? Like I won't bore the viewers. Yeah, it was a nice, really nice smoothie that I made. Mm. Was telling that green thing that everyone No, it wasn't green. I tried it was that yummy. green thing. It was a bit... Okay. Yeah. Carry on with the news. Anyway, we're going so, off point. Now, <laughs> celebrities are always... Sometimes they're known for being a bit clumsy and a bit airheaded and not really smart. But... We do have some very, very brainy celebrities, I kid you not. They didn't get famous just because they look good. They actually do have brains. Okay. I'm talking about them like they're a different species. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But um, James Franco, I'm sure he's the one from Spider-Man, if I'm not wrong. He is, isn't he? I'm sure he is. But he um, is one of the most educated stars in Hollywood. He has a BA in English from UCLA. I always hear about that in these mm -hmm. American sitcoms and a master's in fine arts from Columbia University. And he's also pursuing a PhD at Yale in English. Ooh. I mean, wow. Yale's really top notch, mm -hmm. it's such a top university. So to pursue a PhD in English must be really, really smart. I mean, all the studying and the acting, how do they do it? It's hard, yeah. Are they superhuman? I don't know. Guess we could find out later on. And um, famous Arnold Schwarzenegger, he has a bachelor's degree in business and international economics. I'm sure you mm. did business at um, yeah, university, did, yeah, didn't business you? Studies. Isn't it a bit difficult? And I don't Not know. Really? To, I be honest, to be honest, I found A levels harder than my degree. Really? Yeah. The only thing I, I know really about did. business is breaking even. I just know the word. <laughs> I don't even have a clue what it means to break even. <laughs> that was uh, seriously, Rihanna. <laughs> okay. So we were guaranteed <laughs> every show she's going to say something really ditzy. You're telling me about celebrities being ditzy. I know, right? <laughs> Who am I, celebrity? Get me out of here. <laughs> now, this one's my favourite Lisa Kudrow from Friends, Phoebe. I love her so much. You're mm. so, I don't know, special in Friends. Always make me laugh. You remind me of her. I know, right? <laughs> I'm a bit of a Phoebe on the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stuff that I shouldn't say in public. But yes, our lovely Phoebe, she studied biology at um, Vassar College in the USA, mm -hmm. another popular college there where a lot of well-educated and celebrities go to. And um, Sasha Boren Cohen, he's the funny guy, isn't he? The um, Ali G dude. He, I, I mean... So tell me, is he educated? Is he, is he um, Yeah, he is. He studied history at Cambridge. Oh, really? I'm really shocked. I mean, you know, he's, so, he's got a lot of humour to him. I mean, I couldn't take him seriously. I just to think, all of this Ali G stuff, if I was to ever meet him in person, I'll just roll on the floor out of laughter. But he's got it in, okay. packed up in his brain and all. Natalie Portman from The Black Swan, she's fluent in, get this, okay, English, pretty straightforward, but Japanese, Ooh. French and Hebrew. Wow. I mean, aren't those... I think that takes a special kind of person to be fluent it really in, in does, more, than, because <laughs> more than two languages, I think. Japanese is really, really difficult. Hebrew and French, I mean, they're, I think they're in, on the league of the top hardest languages to learn. Well, you made that up or did you? 
<laughs> no, I think it really eased me. In Japanese, Japanese was really, really difficult. And French is even hard for the French because the language is very, very difficult. And Hebrew, so special. I don't know, I think she's probably got a lineage of grace. I've got a friend like that, actually. Any language she puts her mind to, she just learns so fast. I would love when she to. came over here to England, I met her, she spoke not, well, maybe a couple of words in English. Mm. Within about a month, she was already speaking like really well. And then she was teaching English soon after that. That is fab. She just picked it up so fast. I think That's some people have a talent for it. Yeah. I'm trying to learn Portuguese. been trying to learn for about <laughs> 10, 10 years. <laughs> I was just about to say that. About 10 years <laughs> or more. I'm not giving up, I'm going to get there. You will get there, Chrissy, just like um, Meryl Streep. <laughs> but I do have a business studies degree. <laughs> so Which is good, you know. Fluent in the language of business. Now, the language of business will get you through anywhere. everything anyway, but never mind. How could you? Yeah. Well, I'm doing TV now, so I don't really need it. Kind of, but kind still of. business-minded. Right. What's next? The next news we have now, you know you've made it big when you don't even need to attend an award ceremony for you to win. Mm -hmm. I think they're called New new Direction, it is. I was going to say New Way, One Way. <laughs> new, direction. new Direction. They won three awards and they weren't even present. I think they won Best Why? Pop, Best Live Band. One of the um, artists, I think his name was Zane, he was ill and they'd just been busy filming a lot of stuff. They're really making it in your life, aren't they? From X Factor to not attending your own award ceremony. Have you been watching X Factor? I did for a mm. while. I don't know, it just doesn't really tickle my fancy. I haven't gotten into it this year, I don't know why. I don't know, yeah. but I did hear, I watched them. Um, I watched the, the Illumination. <laughs> I don't watch There the was a one. girl that I know, she was on there, she did really well. She made, I think she made it to the homes, so when you go to the houses. Yeah, judges' yeah. houses. She, but she did really, really well. They did have some really, really, really great things. I mean, I wouldn't put myself there at all. I would get kicked out. Cute. <laughs> My but you can sing, great. actually. I think I can. No, no, I remember. She's a good singer. I like to believe that I can. Do you can. want to give us a little tune now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't oh, know. Oh, go on. It's your opportunity. Oh, my gosh. What, what am I going to sing? What do you want me to sing? Um, oh, my gosh. I don't know. I can't I, believe um, she's actually considering it, but you're brave, you um, are. I don't know so what I'll bring sing. you back as one of the singers one day when we have oh our gosh, shows. Oh, my gosh. You're going to do that. Can be blindfolded? No, no. But we'll sort something out for you. That would be great. Now, talking about singers, Cheryl, formerly known as Cheryl Cole, but now Cheryl Fernandez Rossini, the whole shebang, she's now the first UK female artist to score five number ones. She's really made it big for herself. I mean, Cheryl's, she's a bit business minded, if I can mm -hmm. say, from being in a girl band, being on X Factor, and now just knocking it up with all these mm -hmm. five singles. I mean, You'd expect her to give up somewhere in life. I don't know. Sometimes How would female she? artists, you know, when you f you have, you've got so much bad press, sometimes the media just says a lot of horrible things, and it could really yeah, but push the nation loves to come off it. Yeah, they, they really do, do they love do. her, and she's just pushed her way up there, and she's making it in mm. life. So Fair. good on you, Cheryl. Don't really know what surname to use. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't hurt me, Cheryl, if you ever do see this. We do love you, really. Now, this news piece that I have here is... Um, I'm quite revolted about it, actually, if I have to say, because there's a lot of under 25s who are going under the knife for gastric band surgery really? because they are overweight. And about 62% of them are under 18. Oh, dear. Now, oh, that's terrible. That, that is horrible because it doesn't really help the NHS. But the stores don't make it easier because the other day, I've got this new obsession with dried fruits. Absolutely love dried mangoes. Tried them mm, all yeah. from Marks and Spencers to Tesco's. And I went to one of the stores and there was a packet that wasn't even the size of my hand. I mean, it's probably about <laughs> this big and it was one pound. Quite expensive. Mm. But if you go across the road, you can get everything unhealthy for a pound. How can we expect these young people not to be overweight? Oh, is that what you meant then? Like eating healthy is... It, they don't it's make it easy. It's, yeah, it's quite mm. expensive. I mean, sometimes you can find a bargain here and there. I mean, my mum's so good at finding bargains with fruits, with vegetables, all of that. But sometimes, you just well, don't do you know have what? The time. I think um, if we kind of look at the wide, wider picture, healthy food, if you eat right, is normally quite filling. So you don't yeah. need to eat all much that as much of it. So maybe like someone will go and have like I don't know a couple of burgers or three, two or three burgers that are cheap and still not be full up. But if they have a decent meal, that might be a little bit more expensive, but, but that meal's gonna keep them going. It's gonna keep the, their body 
you know, going all that time. Actually, it's so true. So I think it kind of works out. It really is true, believe it or not. I used to eat five double cheeseburgers a day. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. That was like, what, six years ago? I really That's did. terrible. And what you're saying is true, because with every burger, I would just feel hungry. Yeah. It's yeah. like someone's scooping my stomach out with a spoon. It was horrible. I would yeah. have to have five for me to feel completely full. And then after a while, I feel hungry again. That's, That's the thing. thing. It doesn't keep you going. So, of course, you're going to But when you have more, actually, more money, actually, exactly. But when you have that healthy meal, I could have an I don't know if our experts will agree with them. I'm going to ask them this question, but that's, that's how I'm working out in my head. Because it, it does make a big difference. When I have my salads with prawns, I absolutely love prawns, king prawns, a whole shebang. And I'm full. Yeah. I'd have it lunch, and then I won't really need to eat anything until about four o'clock. But because, you know, I have this thing of eating every three hours, keeps me going fill in with some fruits and fruits are great because it's got a lot of water right so it keeps you filled and you don't need to yeah. go and eat junk food so it's not true it's not expensive to eat it's healthily not expensive we've just dispelled that myth and our cameraman's even nodding <laughs> i don't know if it's nodding at me or is it? <laughs> but you can make it and it's really really yes. filling i love yeah. eating healthy now it was hard at first it really really was kid you not you remember yeah but now it's fine you can have those weeks where Kind of not weeks. The wagon. Okay. Not weeks. <laughs> a, oh, we'll, we'll say a so day. A couple of hours couple or something. Hours yeah. where you get a triple <laughs> week chocolate cheesecake. Oh, right, I've got to stop talking. Now. We're going to get quiet now. We need to go to a break. <laughs> Thank you so much, my darling. Thank you, Ben. And I'm glad you're back on the wagon. You know, going for your fitness goals. Yes. And the viewers are rooting for you. Thank you so much. Okay, so do stay tuned because after the break, we'll have Del Pinnick here to talk to us about healthy foods for your heart and he'll be preparing a dish for us in the studio. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show, and now I'm with Dale Pinnock, medicinal chef. Yes, Hello. how are you doing? It's good to be back. It's great to have you back. Now, you've Thank been really you. busy, haven't you? I have. I've been a bit what of a hermit. What have you been up to? Writing, 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 yeah. I've got a few books coming out next year, so okay. I've just been Can you give us a few hints what's going on? What, what's, what well, kind of I'm, I'm kind of taking the, the subjects a little bit further and really exploring different conditions and okay. uh, ailments and how you would... Kind of tailor your diet accordingly. Okay. All right. So, so we'll wait for those then. You can come yeah, back and going tell down us the rabbit hole them. a little bit more in terms of the actual details. Okay. So. All right. So today we're going to speak, be speaking about healthy heart. Yes. Right. So, so tell us about that. What can we do to have a healthy heart? Well, obviously, I think we're all pretty much aware of the things that we shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we've heard it a million times. We shouldn't be eating the junk food. We shouldn't be smoking fifty a day. We yeah. shouldn't be spending all day in the pub. We've got that bit. These are a few things that you can actually start to incorporate into your daily diet mm -hmm. to actually take some positive steps. Okay. These are the things that you can add rather than talking about all the things that you take away. So the first thing we've got here is good old regular oats. Which I love. Ex oh, you yeah. can't really go far yeah. wrong with oats, right? <laughs> now, oats have actually been clinically proven to lower cholesterol because they contain a very special kind of fibre. This is a fibre called beta-glucan. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it actually forms, it's, it's like a gel-like substance in, in the digestive tract. That will actually bind to cholesterol oh. and carry it away. Now, cholesterol is in the it digestive kind of tract. It, it does, it yeah, because cholesterol is made in the liver. Some of it is sent straight into the blood from the mm -hmm. liver, but most of it is actually released into the digestive tract because it's involved in digestion okay. as well. And then after it's done its job, it gets reabsorbed. Yeah. If you can catch it whilst it's there and get rid and of it. And oats are so cheap as well, aren't they? They are, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cheap as chips yeah. and versatile as well. Yeah, Which very good. good. And you're going to be making something later yes, on with that, aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay. I am. That's mm. going to come in useful later. Now, one of my absolute favourite <laughs> ingredients here, garlic. I mean, this is something that does kind of creep its way into nearly everything that I mm -hmm. cook, but not the dessert. <laughs> not dessert, I was yeah, going to yeah, say. Yeah. Well, that's kind of Heston territory. I've not quite <laughs> yeah. got there yet, but if I kind of come up with something, I'll let you know. Um, again, it's something that's got a really good track record for heart health. There's a compound in there called Aoin. Mm. I won't be testing you on this. No, no, way. please don't. Aoin. And what this does is it interacts with something called platelet aggregation factor. The long story short, it affects the rate and extent to which blood clots. It actually works like a bit of a blood thinner. Okay. Okay. Obviously it's temporary, it's transient, but if regular consumption of these things can start to, start to add up. Now, 
we come on to one of my absolute favourites, yes. oily fish. Mm -hmm. Oily fish, again, another food stuff that's been really, really widely studied in terms of cardiovascular health. And it's all down to the omega-3 fatty acids. Mm -hmm. Those vital oils that, I mean, they're beneficial for almost every single body system, especially for the cardiovascular system though. Their main action is that they're anti-inflammatory. Those omega-3 fatty acids are essentially like the metabolic building blocks that our body uses to manufacture mm -hmm. its own inbuilt anti-inflammatories. We're now 100% certain basically that cardiovascular disease is an inflammatory condition. Okay. Way before cholesterol and all those other things get involved, mm -hmm. it's actually little areas of inflammation within the vessels that trigger everything off. If you can keep the inflammation down, mm -hmm. i.e. consuming those kind of foods, then it's going to have a protective Now, is effect. it true that you're not supposed to eat more than three portions a week of oily fish because of the mercury? The mercury. I had a brilliant the thing the other day. Now, I'm, I'm lucky enough to work very, very closely with some of the, the world's leading authorities on omega-3 and mm -hmm. seafood consumption. And the analogy that I heard was, someone asked that question, and he said, do you live within 20 miles of a road? And I said, yes. I said, well, already you're consuming more mercury per day oh, than wow. you would if you ate fish every, <laughs> every single day of, yeah. your, of your life. Yeah. You can equate it to being like a grain of sand in a bathtub. That's the actual level that you would right. get in there. Okay. And there's higher levels just, I mean, especially if you live in London, my word, you'd, mm -hmm. be, you know, you'd be taking in way more. The consequences of not consuming those kind of foods far outweigh. Oh, okay. Any, that's good any to clear that one risk. up because I know that's always been in people's it minds. It is, it is. And it's just one of those little things that the press have got hold of. And yeah. It's, it's snowballed and there's not really much truth there particularly. Okay. And then obviously you can, look at, you can look at supplementing with it as well if you don't like oily fish because I know some of them have got quite a strong mm. flavour. You can get capsules as well. Yeah. Now, <laughs> we get on to some of the fun foods here. It's not all about, you know, I mean, obviously the fresh vegetables and those kind of things are wonderful. But there's some kind of indulgent foods as well that mm -hmm. can be very good for us, including this one. Dark chocolate. chocolate. These three things here are all really, really rich sources of a group of compounds called flavonoids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, flavonoids have been very, very extensively studied here in the UK at the University of Reading. What this research has actually shown is that these compounds, I mean, they're in dark chocolate. They're also in blueberries. They're the things that actually make it dark purple. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorites is a nice glass of red wine. All of these are very, very rich sources. These flavonoids, when we actually consume them, when they get absorbed, go into the actual the, the, the cells that make up the inner lining of our blood vessels, mm -hmm. like the inner skin, and cause those cells to secrete something called nitric oxide. Again, I'm not testing this, don't <laughs> worry. When they do that, that nitric oxide goes out into the muscular walls of the vessels, makes mm -hmm. the muscles relax. As the muscles relax, the vessel gets bigger, the pressure within it drops. Okay. So the message is, those kind of foods can temporarily Mm -hmm. lower blood pressure. So obviously this ain't replacing a drug anytime soon, but this is a perfect example of the kind of things that you can start to build your diet around to actually yeah. have some kind of targeted functional effect. Okay, so Dale, now you're going to make a quick dessert that's yes. also healthy for our heart and guilt-free. I know, I know. A lot of people think that they need to give up the foods that they love. It's all about just little tweaks here and there. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm quite partial to is a crumble. Yes, me too. A good fruit crumble. Yeah. Now, I know we can't cook in here, so I've prepared some of the stuff earlier. What okay. I've done is taken some blueberries mm -hmm. and some blackberries, a little bit of cinnamon in there, mm -hmm. tiny little bit of water, tiny little bit of uh, honey in there. Okay. And then just simmered it, simmered it, simmered it, rather than sugar. piling it full of, full of like refined sugar and yeah. all sorts of other nasties okay. and gelling agents and all the other things. Just literally simmer it until the fruit starts to burst. And like, I'll put it in this glass dish so you can actually see, see it layering is up. Is that jam? It is, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, there, there's... Do you put that on toast as well, do you? Or is... you? You could do. You could use this on toast. Absolutely <laughs> no problem whatsoever. You can add whatever spices you want. You could have cardamom or star anise, even mm. a bit of chilli in there. That okay. with chilli, like on a little bit of goat's cheese. Oh, Ooh, amazing. Nice. So we've got loads and loads of flavonoids in there. Those are the things that are giving the purple colour pigment, mm -hmm. so that's blood pressure. Then, nice layer of oats. So you're doing away with the butter and the flour and using yeah, that stick. To be fair, if you, if you just place that under a grill, as it is, that will go crunchy anyway. That top okay. layer will, will brown. You don't necessarily need to add that particularly. Mm -hmm. And it is as simple as that. And you can you can have that as it is. So would you like to be the guinea pig? I mean, look at that. How beautiful is that? Gosh, that was so quick. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, to actually stew those down took took me eight minutes. If I don't that. want to get this all over my face. I should turn around, shouldn't I? Mmm. <laughs> 
That's delicious. Exactly. So you can that still so literally have well. your cake and eat it, right? Mm. Exactly. That's the sweetness of the fruit. There is a little bit of honey just to take the edge yeah. off like the, the tartness of the blackberries, but that's it. That is lovely. See, guilt-free desserts. Doesn't mean you have to stop enjoying yourself. Exactly. Just learn like what what ingredients can be beneficial mm. to you and how to prepare them in a more healthful way and you can you could put some natural yogurt on top of that. You could. Oh, it'd be beautiful, yeah. Brilliant. Dale, thank you so very it's a much. Brilliant having you again and hope we get to see you again soon. Well, you can tell us well. more about your cookery books that are coming out. Okie dokie, so before we go to a break, let's just take a look at this fitness tip with Jane Rafter. Hi everyone, I want to talk to you today about having strong bones and we all know that if you exercise regularly, um, especially with weights, you can really strengthen the muscles and strengthen the body that way. But what you should also bear in mind, a real positive benefit of weight bearing exercise is that you actually increase the density not only of your muscle tissue but of your bones and, and we've talked about this before on the show but it really is worth saying it again and to remind everybody of the importance particularly for women and particularly for women who are heading for menopause in menopause or post menopause because you're more susceptible to osteoporosis okay so you need to get into your strength exercise either use weights or use your natural body weight swimming press-ups that kind of thing so please bear in mind it's not just about shifting fat or building strength it's about having strong bones as well okay so get exercising everyone and I'll see you soon Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. So now it's time to welcome Julianne Pone into the studio. Hello, my darling. Hi there. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Now, you are very successful. Yeah. And you, how old do you mind asking how old you are? I've just turned 25. 25, and you started off really young. Yeah, so I started off at 23 when I came back from China. Okay, so tell us um, a bit about your background first of all. So what did you want to be growing up? What, what were your dreams when you were small? Well, when I was really young, I actually wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. But that didn't work out. Uh -huh. um, I went to university to do business studies and finance. And from there, I wanted to go into investment banking, mm -hmm. which I did in Beijing. I went over for a year. Okay. And then when I came back, um, basically my father had invested into a company. Mm -hmm. um, and he asked me to do some due diligence on it and see what was going on. Um, and I went in, I came back from Beijing, had a look, and I found the company was in huge losses. Um, and he wasn't going to get his investment back at all. Mm -hmm. So he gave me the option to buy into the company, which is what I did. It was quite a risk at the time. Oh. I, I didn't think I was going to do it. Um, I wanted to go back to Beijing and just carry on doing banking. Mm -hmm. But um, he what said... What made you go for it, though? It's kind of no risk, no fun for me. And my dad's an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. so it's kind of in my blood. And I was just okay. like, yeah, okay, I'm going to go for it. I said, but if I invest, I'm going to put everything I have into it, and that's it, wow. which is what I did. And so what happened? Well, in the first 18 months after I took over, I bought the company out of losses. There were days, though, wow. <laughs> maybe where I didn't think I was going to carry on, I was going to give up. Mm -hmm. um, there it was quite hard. Uh, January last year, actually, I was thinking of selling the company. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. Um, my colleague actually talked me out of it. He's also my partner. And he said, look, actually take a s like, look back at what you've actually achieved. Mm -hmm. He goes, you're always looking forward, but actually look at what you've, what you've done. What so kind of sacrifices though did you have to make? Because obviously you're a young woman. You obviously want to have some relaxation time to have some fun as well. But obviously having your own business and a business that's not doing great that you need to like, turn around. You must have had to make a lot of sacrifices. Yeah, the social side of things, I did lose a lot of my close friends. I didn't mm. have time to spend with them. But now they're all starting to come back and we go out now more often. Aww. 
But so they were understanding, kind of? <laughs> some of them were, other ones weren't. People I went out with at uni know I kind of lost all of them. But mm. that was a choice I had to make. Like, if you're going to do something, you're going to have to put in 70-hour weeks. You're not going to be able to get by with a 40-hour week like a normal job. Wow. Gosh, you just can't. Hard. Now, health-wise now, what, what made you so interested in, in the health aspect? Well, first of all, tell us about Creative Nature. Well, Creative Nature is a superfood company. Mm -hmm. So we do lots of different like health food products, so like maca, cacao, um, barley grass. And basically they go into like smoothies or your porridge as an enhancement to help you get nutritional benefits. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we've also got like healthy snack bars, which we formulated, which contain our superfoods like goji berries okay. and cacao. And they're all raw as well. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, I got, I wanted them made like that so that people can get something easy on the go. Because I know earlier um, there was a comment about it's so hard to get health, healthy foods, which it is, I agree, but you've just got to look in the right places. You can mm. now go online and order from loads of places. Mm. Um, but yeah, and basically I have my own allergies because I'm allergic to nuts. Um, and a lot of additives, mm -hmm. so I needed to make sure the bars didn't contain additives, all the superfoods were gluten-free. Okay. Um, How hard was that to, to develop the products? Were you directly involved in, in the actual product? Creation? Yeah, it took around 12 months formulating it. Uh, it was quite fun, a lot of mixing, a lot of trying it out on people <laughs> on the street as I'll well. I'll make guinea pig <laughs> if you ever want. <laughs> yeah, well you're going to try one later. Oh, no, well, the, yeah, the finished product, we've got a few here. So, so tell us, you've got a few here, you've got like... Um, so that's Blissful Berries. Blissful Berry. So it's got goji berries try. and cranberries. Come on talking, I'm going to open this while you... And don't, don't put the camera on me, please, while I'm eating. <laughs> it's yeah. high in um, vitamin C from yeah. the goji berries. So like a handful of goji is around 500 times more vitamin C than one orange. Sorry, can you say that again? I was going to say, I was going to say, I put it in the back, say it again, sorry. So a handful of goji berries mm -hmm. is around 500 times more vitamin C than one orange. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. We're not telling you that there's 500 times more vitamin C than an orange in that bar, mm. though, because obviously it's a handful of goji. Not that is lovely. So what's in this, apart from goji berries? And so you've got cranberries, papaya, apricots. Mm. That is delicious. Yeah, and it's all, it, there's no refined sugar, so there's no mm. added syrups. A lot of people use agave and things, but they're still... Um, they're not as good for you if you just cold press it, yeah. which is what we do. Okay. Um, and you notice it's quite moist yeah. because we use uh, rapeseed oil to um, keep the bar moist and keep really a longer yummy. shelf life. Tell us about the other ones. I'm not going to open all of them, don't worry guys. So that's oh, Sublime Seed. Um, Sublime it, Seed. What's, it what's contains that? hemp protein and peanuts. Mm -hmm. So hemp protein is a 50% protein and it's suitable for vegans. So because they can't take whey because obviously the dairy. Mm -hmm. um, and that bar is actually 20% protein, so it's great as a recovery bar for athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, we sponsor like a triathlon team in London, and they use the bars as a recovery. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And you've got another one here, Tropical. Yeah, Tropical, tropical treat. treat. That's the oh, love it or hate it. Oh, so it. yummy. Are you going to give me a couple of these to take home? Yeah, you can have some. <laughs> I'll take advantage of my position as a TV presenter today. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, that's the love it or hate it one. It's a strong taste of ginger. Um, I love ginger. Pineapple and Paldarco tea. Mm -hmm. So it's the best one for you because it um, detoxes the body from the barley grass because it alkalizes the blood sugar levels okay. at the same time. Wow. But obviously there's only a small percentage in the bar, but it's yeah. just... If you were to take barley grass on its own as a shot, which we do, mm -hmm. it would be much more beneficial for now, you. Now, are you super healthy? Um, I do have cheat days. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Not like Rihanna's, like, uh, Not weeks. five cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that, no. But I do like to have a bit of everything. I'm yeah. not um, vegan or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I do like to have fish. I do like to have meat. A balanced diet is yeah, what you actually it. need. Now, just something I wanted to ask you, Julian, because you mentioned your partner earlier. How important is it to sort of your well-being and to your business to have a supportive partner? Yeah, a lot of people have said, how do you do it? Mm. Because obviously you're working together quite close and the argue there are arguments. Mm -hmm. But you have to keep work, work and home, home. But you're without him. Oh, how do you do that? <laughs> because when we get into an argument at work, mm. he will draw the line and say... No, that was ha happened at work. At home, it's a different story. Oh, that's good. So, when we first started walking away oh, we together, it was hard. 
He should probably, yeah. not me. <laughs> But no, we do, we do have arguments and sometimes I do pull rank mm -hmm. when I'm like, no, I am I think we should do it this way. For example, that bar, mm -hmm. I said there's no way we're cutting it from the range, but he wanted it cut. But it's what got us listed in Holland and Barrett. All right, so, okay, so you've learnt to kind of compromise. Yeah, we've things. compromised. Okay, and tell us, for, for people that are watching now, especially like the... Let's talk about the younger generation, actually, because you were very young when you, when you started. What was that like? Did you get sort of pressure from people saying that you couldn't do it because of your age? Yeah, when I first brought into Creative Nature, I was looking for investment even more so mm -hmm. because I needed to get the company out of the, the huge deficit it was in. Um, and I went to investors. I was in investment banking, so I knew people in that network mm -hmm. as well. But they just said, no, it's too high a risk. First of all, they said I was a woman. And so <laughs> secondly, you. they said I was very young um, to take a risk on at the time, even mm. though I had credibility of listings in Holland mm. and and like future listings as well. But they literally just said, no, there's no way we can take that risk. Oh. So I took more of my savings and just put it in. And proved everyone wrong. Well, now, yeah, now we are profiting and Good we're... We're in Tesco's now as well. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah, Gosh. and Ocado. So it's, it's gone That's really amazing. well for us. But What do you see for the future for your business? Well, I want to be in all the major multiples, mm -hmm. which is slowly happening as we speak. Um, I also want to do exporting more because um, we currently export to like Sweden, Slovakia mm -hmm. um, and Dubai. But I want to go more into Europe um, and okay. I think that will make the company to its next hurdle. Yeah. Now I know there's people watching now that are maybe thinking of starting their own business and maybe they are you know, youngsters even watching and they want to do something but they say, you know what, I don't know if I can make it. What advice would you give to them? I would say if you're going to take the risk you need to be 100% sure mm -hmm. um, because you are going to need to put in the hours. And also there's lots of people out there to help you now. Like I'm a virgin mentor mm -hmm. at the moment, so I'm a business consultant for them. Oh, wow. And I help younger entrepreneurs actually do do it and get their business plan together. And basically they get a loan from Virgin mm -hmm. and I help them put the money, like basically help them put the money in the right place oh, to propel their business. Wow. And yeah, basically that's what I do. And um, go to things like the business show. Um, mm -hmm. I'm talking at that event um, in November. Basically, it's a free show to attend, so you don't need to pay to actually go, yeah. and you can get the advice that you need. And there's amazing speakers like James Kahn, mm -hmm. um, da David Gold, so Richard There is help Reed. out there when, when yeah. someone really wants to, but like I said, you have to be 100% committed, because yeah. if you're not, and the first obstacle that comes, you're going to think, you know what, I can't be bothered. But if you're this, your dream, you really want to go for it, you'll find a way, wouldn't you? Yeah, and you yeah. need to have the cash flow behind yeah. it. Don't, don't be fooled by, oh yes, it would, money will just come in. You're mm -hmm. going to need to put a lot into it. Okay, my darling, thank you so much. Your story is really inspiring and all the best with your business. Thank I'm sure you. we're going to hear a lot more from you. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so do stay tuned because after the break, self-development coach Chris Brown will be speaking about commitment and I'll also be answering a question from a viewer. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back and now we're in the self-development clinic with Chris Brown. Hello Chris. Hi Chrissy. How are you? I am really good. Um, having a look at what was going on earlier on. Mm -hmm. Missed out a little bit there but it's great. So yeah, sorry, we didn't great. save any food for you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe able to get one of those bars though. <laughs> we'll see what we can do for you. Right, Chris, before we go into your topic, which is how to be committed, That's correct, let's yeah. just answer this question from a viewer. Um, and this one's from Joseph and he says, Hi Chrissy, my wife is pregnant with our first child and I'm looking forward to being a parent, but I noticed recently that she has started to check up on me and is becoming suspicious, especially if I come home a bit late. I've heard about women being insecure when pregnant, but don't want to cause anything if it's just one of those hormonal things. Okay, so um, I've also heard that women get paranoid when they're mm. pregnant. Um, and indeed, hormones are all over the place, I'm sure. But most likely, she's just tired. You know, her body's changing. It's, you know, it's the first child. Maybe she doesn't feel as attractive as she normally does. So you could try 
like just reassuring her and telling her she's beautiful because I'm sure she is. Um, but don't just blame it on the hormones. Have a talk with her. Sit down and have a, a proper chat and reassure her. And you know, see yourself. Have your has your behaviour changed in any way? You know, are you spending enough time with her? Um, have you changed your behavior in any way towards her? So just check all of those things. But obviously the first step would be just to sit down with her and have a chat and try to be patient because this is a, a new time. It's a, it's a scary time for a lot of women, especially if it's their first child. And also make sure that she's having her regular checkups at the doctor, make sure she's eating correctly and getting the vitamins and everything that she needs as well. I don't know if you want to add to that, Chris, anything well, you'd like to all, say. Well, it all, to be honest, on that one. <laughs> but the main thing is uh, the communication. They need yeah, to communicate. Yeah. She needs to actually, actually you've said it, he needs to reassure her at the end yeah. of the day. I mean, yeah. when's he going to run? Come on. Yeah, don't know? just blame it all on the hormones. Yeah. Although I know they do cause problems sometimes. Anyway, <laughs> if you have a question you'd like to ask me, you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. So, Chris, how can we stay more committed well, to things? He's made a commitment, hasn't he? Mm. Yeah, on that level. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Mm. <laughs> all right, um, we're talking about uh, being committed and committed to anything. It's funny because earlier on you were talking about diets as well. Yeah. And heard it mentioned to Rihanna as well about diets, and that is a commitment, but they've got a reason why they're doing it at the end of the day. No matter what you do, we're talking about commitments, we could talk about in marriage, you could talk about uh, your beliefs, you could be talking about your work, your goals, your commitments, anything mm. towards them. We're talking about a commitment overall. Now, most times you find that people say, well, I've committed to this, I've committed to that, and then partway through they're struggling with it, thinking, why did I commit to this? Why did I do this? Oh, I don't really want to go there today, I don't want to do this or the other. The reason that's happening is, one, they've made a commitment for something they haven't really thought about. They haven't actually thought it out. So we got the first one, which is the why are you committing? So you've got to recognise why you actually get involved with this project. Mm -hmm. What's the outcome? What do you see coming out of it? You know, because if you get to that point where you're actually getting really tired and you're thinking, why am I doing this? You've got to question yourself, first of all. Why did you commit to it, yeah. right? Now, so that's number one. Let's talk about what actually inspires you from that. That will help you in your commitment. You've got to actually think about the outcome, the end vision of what you really wanted to do in the mm -hmm. beginning. Because you're going to get those days where you're going to say, why did I do this? Yeah, and um, we know what it's like yeah. at times, right? So going back to that, you've got to work out what inspires you. What is it? What is the reason that you actually took this on in the first place? What was your end vision at the end of the day? Now, we, I said we could talk about anything. We could talk about marriage, talk about projects, business. We could talk about any of these reasons, right? Now, funny enough, as I always say, funny enough, <laughs> right? Um, the letter that you got just a while ago, mm -hmm. right? If you got to go, if they went back and realised why they actually came together in the first place, what was the things that actually ignited them to be together? Really and truly, let's just start flittering away. All these little insecurities of saying, oh, this, that, and I'm wary at night, and this sort of, what is the reason in the first place, you know, they've actually come together, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about that as well. Let's talk about business, same thing, the projects that you do. Make sure you've got that end vision of why you started it and what you wanted to see at the end. Okay, so, and from there, we're talking about other things. Now you've actually got it going, you've got to make yourself accountable. And when I say make yourself accountable, not just to somebody else, one to yourself, first of all, mm -hmm. right, to carry it through right to the end. Next one is somebody you trust, somebody who's in the same thinking as you, that has, shares the same sort of goal, you know, because sometimes you might share that with somebody, just make yourself accountable to someone who probably might not be in that thinking as well. And there's two ways of saying this. There's one that says, um, hey, great stuff, go for it. Did you do this? Did you do that? And then you get the other one who's going- Julianne was saying earlier that, you know, that okay. there was a time when she just wanted to call it quits, but then her partner just reminded there her why she was go. doing it and everything. So you need, but say if that had been just a friend that wasn't really, maybe was missing her Didn't friendship, and she went and spoke to her friend, said, I'll oh, just give it in, you know, you, you're spending too much time on it, come on, let's go out party and stuff like that. And it happens. Depends who you talk to, doesn't yeah, it? And exactly. It's yeah. where you actually place that trust at the end yeah. of the day. So, and you just said that with Julia at the same time. Now, you said it's a partner. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. It's somebody who's with you all the time, understands you, goes through what you're going through, the ups, yeah. the downs and everything like that. You know, you go to somebody else when you're going through a down for it, and you're thinking, well, what's wrong with you? You chose to do that. Mm -hmm. No, you need somebody who actually understands. So make yourself accountable yeah. someone. Now, let's go for this one. Now that you've actually done these three, what you've got to do is work out three little actions that you will do each day towards this goal. Now I say each day, for some people that's a bit much. What, seven days a week, three actions, or five days a week? No, mm -hmm. could do 
uh, let's say a day miss a day, a day miss a day, but at least do three actions each day and plan them the night before of what you're going to do towards, back to the same thing, okay. that end vision. Even if it's something small. That's it, mm. keep it bite size, you know, keep okay. it bite size. Because sometimes we take off a big chunk and we start working it, you put pressure on yourself. And before you know it, part of the day is gone, you think I haven't done the other one yet as well. Mm. And then you add pressure on yourself, top of that, it's not as enjoyable anymore. So yeah. bite size parts, three of them each day. Just do a bit towards it, bit towards it. It's funny because when you get that, you get excited about getting up in the morning and going for it in the first place. Think, oh, I've got to get up. You know, it's funny, I'm working on a project right now and the same thing, I realise, well, hang on, I usually get up this time up before the alarm clock, that sort of thing, you know. So when you've got that going, you know that it's something that's going to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. You will get to the end. So make yourself accountable to somebody. Work out your end vision. And overall, do those three bits, three actions. Because you can do all the rest, but if you don't actually do any actions towards it, nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah? That's right. And it is really, really important to be sure about what you're doing because Diff if, that's why you just sometimes you just need to take some time out to think and oh, not yeah, rush yeah. into anything or not yes. just do something because someone else is telling you it's a great thing. If that's not your dream, if that's not what you really want to do, it's, it's not going to work. You're going to fizzle no, out. No. It's like some, when, when kids, they, they just do what their parents tell them to do in terms of studying. And right. then, like, okay, they might become a lawyer, they might become this business owner, business owner, but it's not something that they really want to do. So it just becomes boring for them. They don't look, look forward to getting up in the morning and going to work or doing that thing. No, it's but when it's drag. something that they have a passion for, even when the time, times do get tough, yes. they've yep. got that drive in them to get through those, th through those times because yep. they love what they're doing. There's something that ignites inside that just keeps yeah. you going, keeps you fueled on that. But yeah. just as you said, if you're doing it for somebody else, forget it. Yeah. Along the way, it's going to fail. Along the way, I don't mean to say the word fail, but truly, you'll fizzle yeah. out along the way. It's not true. And you do have yeah. to take risks as well, because we've had guests on the show before saying how they were in one um, working. I don't know. Some of them said they worked in banks and all, all sorts yeah. of things, and they they took a risk by going to something completely different that they didn't know about, but they were really interested in. Yeah. And some of them earning less than what they were before, but they're happy. I they're happy because they're doing something that they love. It's funny you say that. It was a particular woman we had on one time who was in banking before and she mm. changed it. And that always stuck in my mind. It's very yeah. inspirational. I think people who take those sort of risks, who found out what their innate nature, what they really wanted to do instead, yeah. clap it's to so them. so important. Yeah, brilliant. And for the people that don't actually know what they want to do yet. That's the thing, because sometimes you think, I want to do something, I want to like be successful in my life, but I don't actually know what, what to go into. Well, what would you say? What I'd say to those people is one thing, as I've said before, always go back to the things that you did when you were younger, what you knew you were naturally good at, because something changed along the way. And then see if it's something that you feel that you can actually develop, because it will be something that you'll carry on doing, which was your innate potential, which you mm -hmm. could do. And at the end of the day, let's talk about, we're talking about transferable skills. Yeah. Yeah. You found out a thing that you're naturally good at, working at it, see where you can actually transfer it and spend it, what field? You'll excel. Yeah. Yeah. And there are always people to help you too. Of course. There's of business course. mentoring and there's all sorts of things. You yeah. can get advice from people that already have their own business. There's so many people you can talk to nowadays. There and as, as Julian was saying, the business, what's it called? That was what it's called. earlier on. What was the place called? No, the other one. Oh, the business show. The business show, that's ah, it. I've okay. been there a few <laughs> Sorry, times, guys. it's great. It's the brilliant. business show, yeah, yeah. It's so there's great. a place, yeah. like she said, it's free. You can just go there, yeah. talk, chat to people. Mm. So, there's so there's so much help out there. It's just you getting out there and just going for it and taking a risk. Finding out, finding out. Find ask out. questions, ask intelligent questions. Yes. You'll get intelligent answers. Definitely. That's it at the end of the day. All righty, Chris, yeah. thank you so much. Pleasure. I'm sure you've helped our viewers today. All right, guys, so we have reached the end of today's programme. So if you want more information about the guests that we've had on today, you can visit the website, chrissybshow.tv. And if you'd like to email me personally, you can do so on chris at chrissybshow.tv. Maybe you have your own success story you'd like to share to inspire the viewers. See you again next time. Bye-bye for now.